Greetings, Souls Wind here, and welcome to Let's Play Shapes IO. In this episode, we are going to make this shape. It's the eighth shape used for upgrades, and it's also the level 26 shape. Since we'll need a lot of the shape, we could get to it first instead of working on the level 25 shape. Now, why do I start this episode this way? It's because it was quite a struggle trying to figure out the shape composition with a lot of footage showing the fails. So, for this episode, I will begin by showing the successful attempt at building the factory and then explain the shape composition according to my understanding, which might be wrong. I'll probably add a few snippets of the failed attempts at the end of the episode. Okay, so now let me show how this shape is actually being produced. I'm not going to talk about how to produce the white dye, but this is dedicated for this system. I'm also not going to show this one. I'm not going to show the animations for the quad painting. They're pretty straightforward. Just quad paint, right? Now, this one. The red circle is being produced here. And it's being sent across to here and it gets quad cut. This quadrant was actually the top right quadrant, while this is actually the bottom right quadrant. But why do I purposely rotate this and discard this? It's because there's a tunnel here, so I cannot send the tunnel like that downwards over to here. This is the top left quadrant. This used to be the bottom left quadrant, rotated to become the bottom right quadrant. So we need two of bottom right quadrants. This shape gets sent across through these tunnels. And we have the red star being produced here. Now, the output from the circle section are these two. We'll put that aside. We'll take a look at star shape. The star shape is this tunnel. It gets quad cut as well. Top right, bottom right quadrant gets stacked together to make this shape. Bottom left quadrant gets sent over here. Top left quadrant discarded. Let's start with this one first. Top right quadrant and bottom right quadrant gets stacked with the top left quadrant and bottom right quadrant of circle section. This entire shape gets rotated anti-clockwise so that we keep whatever we want on the left side, whatever we don't want on the right side can be discarded once we cut that. The cutter does that work. The right side then gets discarded. The left side gets rotated clockwise to become the top side again. So this goes here and waits here. Remember the other part here that we stopped over here? The bottom right circle quadrant gets stacked onto the bottom left star to make this shape. This acts as the base layer. The white circle gets stacked on the base layer and forms the second layer. When this base layer and second layer get stacked onto the base layer over here, this shape has got a base layer and a second layer. Why does this one not then fall all the way down and merge with the second layer so that these become like at the bottom? It's because there is an overlap of this white circle with this base layer. At least according to my understanding, I might be wrong. This one doesn't fall all the way down and become the base layer. Instead, it joins this second layer of this segment because there is an overlap of the white circle with the second layer of this segment. This shape is then very easy to work with. Just stack the resultant shape onto the quad painted shape and we have the output. So I hope this animation on screen will help, but let's move on. I'll show you the remaining parts of the factory and that is the base and the white circle. So the base is being processed over here. I process these, paint the quad painting, then send it over. The white circle here. And then the white dye produced by these. How do we extend this factory?
Send this over here. And then we're done. Now, this starts increasing. How wonderful. Let's start the explanation segment with the red star. We want to compose the half red star after it has been cut into four parts. And we want to keep the top right and bottom right quadrant of the red star. So, this bottom right quadrant falls in place. They become a singular object, as you can see here. We'll call this object alpha. Next, we have this shape. It is a red circle, but we only preserve the top left quadrant and the bottom right quadrant. We call this shape beta. Beta will be stacked on alpha. Alpha is at level 1. Let's change the angle to better visualize the stacking. This falls into position. Now, let's look at it from the top again. This is what we see. Alpha is at level 1, beta is at level 2. There is something supporting beta from falling to level 1. So, beta takes on its level 2 size representation. And it becomes one shape. And from the side, we see this. The next step I did was to rotate this anti-clockwise by 90 degrees. Next, the right side of this shape is cut. We can see it from the side again. This shape was discarded. And we're left with this shape, which we then rotate clockwise 90 degrees. Let's take a look at this shape from the side. As you can see, this part of the shape, which is the star shape portion, is at level 1. This is at level 2. Because this is one shape, the level 1 holds up level 2. And this part of the shape does not fall down. Let's call this shape Charlie and put it aside for now. Let's look at the other part of the final shape. For that, we need a bottom left quadrant of the red star and a bottom right quadrant of the circle. And we stack them in place, the circle quadrant onto the red star quadrant. Let's look at it from the side. It falls in place like this. Since there's nothing preventing the circle quadrant from falling to level 1, which is where the red star quadrant is at, they both are now at level 1. And after stacking, they are a single entity. Let's call this shape Delta and let's bring back Charlie. Looks a little bit weird, but it's due to perspectives. We can look at it from the side. What happens though, if we were to stack Delta to Charlie? It's going to fall to level 1. That's because there is nothing preventing Delta falling straight down to level 1. And it will bypass this which is level 2. So this cannot be done. Let's bring in the white circle. And it covers delta, but that's due to perspective. Let's look at it from the side. The white circle is going to be stacked onto delta. The components of delta are all at the same level, level 1. When the white circle gets stacked onto delta, the components of delta prevents the white circle from falling to level 1. So the white circle remains one level above delta and takes on the level 2 size representation. Looks okay. This shape is now a singular entity. This shape has got a level 1 component which comprises of a red circle quadrant, a red star quadrant, and a level 2 component which comprises of the white circle. We now bring in Charlie. It cannot be seen, it's below. You can see this little part peeking out here. But if we were to change the angle, we can see Charlie here. We're going to stack this new shape onto Charlie. This is a level 1 and level 2 representation. Charlie has got a level 1 and level 2 representation as well. 
This new shape, let's call it Echo. Echo is going to be stacked on Charlie. We will ignore this level reference for now and instead change it to layer 1 and layer 2. This is still level because this is where we are going to stack Echo onto. Now let's move it for stacking. Echo stops here. The level 1 component of Charlie holds up the level 2 component of Charlie. For Echo, the layer 1 cannot fall to level 1 of Charlie because the white circle stops one level above at level 3. The layer 1 of Echo now stops at level 2 of the final shape. This part is a little bit hard to understand at first. It took me quite a bit of time to understand this as well. Let's look at it from a different angle. This is what it looks like from the top before they take their respective size representations. And this is from the correct side. This is level 1. This is level 2 together with this. And this is level 3. We now need this echo shape to take on its correct size representations before it is united with the Charlie shape to form a single entity. Let's give them the right size representation. Now let's take a look at it from how we look at it in the game. It is now a singular entity. Let's call this shape Foxtrot. The final step will be to bring in the blue and grey circle. This is the base of the final shape. We are going to stack Foxtrot onto this blue and grey circle. The blue and grey circle is at level 1. Now let's refer to these as layers. Foxtrot has layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3. Now let's do the stacking. Look at it from the top, we have this. Look at it from the side, we can see the layers clearly. There's enough of the blue and grey circle to prevent Foxtrot from dropping to level 1. So the blue and grey circle stays at level 1. Meanwhile, this layer 1 of Foxtrot is now at level 2 of the final shape. Layer 2 of Foxtrot at level 3. Layer 3 of Foxtrot at level 4. They are at different levels now, and therefore they take on the respective size representations of those levels. Then again, the white circle seems a little bit of... Give me a moment. There. This final shape is what we need to submit. And if we were to take a look from the side, we have the shapes at level 1, level 2, level 3, and level 4 and they have their respective size representations. So this is it. This is the shape we need to submit for Shapes IO level 26, and also the eighth shape for the upgrades. I hope the explanation helped in the understanding of how this shape is composed rather than cause more confusion. But this is my own interpretation of the logic behind the stacking, which might be wrong. Anyway, I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching this part of the explanation. This segment was made using Blender version 2.92.0. I'm going to just end the episode here. Next episode, I'll produce this shape. Thank you so much for watching. That's all I have for now. Have a nice day.